How's it going today, guys? Welcome to the stream. Hope you're having a good week. Uh, yeah, I think someone said the week has been, has flown by absolutely here as well. Um, so today the plan is just casual, um, what do you call it? Q&A stream if you have any questions about Reaper, music production, audio equipment, anything like that. And we might do some other things as they come to me because I still got some brain fog this morning and I uh, didn't really get to plan much of a stream this week. I haven't opened Reaper really at all the whole week. So the only little bit of news this week is uh, the the sale on for the courses at the Reaper blog. Reaper blog summer sale starts today, goes to the end of August. The video tools, presets and training, the full course of which compiled about five years of making videos in Reaper, all of the presets that I had built for myself to do titles, to do transitions, things like that. Uh, that's all in there. And there are three parts of the mixing in Reaper uh, series, which is taking a song from opening the project for the first time all the way up to mastering. So there's three different songs, different genres in that series. You can buy it as a bundle or individually. The discount code is SUMMER. Use that, that at checkout and yeah, it's 50% off. So $15 for the Mixing and Reaper videos individually or 15 for the video tools links in the description already a lot of people have these all already thank you so much for the support but yeah i haven't done a sale this year yet i don't think so now is your chance i've got a plugin i brought it up last week but i didn't actually really play with it so this plugin here um from devious machines is called multiband x6 it's a six band multiband processor just click to uh, drag, to add in a new band, drag to change the band crossover. And then with band selected, there's compression with a couple different modes. There's an expansion mode. Um, what else do we have? Stereo, mid side, stereo linked, side chain, multi band or wide band, all kinds of things. I got this a couple weeks ago. I really haven't played with it at all. If this is something that you're interested in, we can look at this, but it's brand new to me. So if you're looking for a multiband uh, compressor that's like modern, has all the modern features, it seems pretty cool. Devious Machines is is a, you know, a friend of the blog. I've reviewed some of their stuff after buying it, some of the stuff that they've sent to me. I have most of the stuff at this point. And uh, I really like the company. I like what they do. I like their their UIs, their ideas. Uh, they've been um, good supporters of the blog, giving me things to talk about. Jason says, I love DD's machine stuff. Yeah, they make nice stuff, sure. Multi-band compressors are kind of all the same in a way, but it's just the little details of like having like linked gains, things like that, that make each one better or worse for you. Having an auto threshold control, that's all cool stuff. So individual control, you can select a single band, you can change the compression amount, threshold amount, the gain amount, or with none of them selected, I'm not sure how to unselect, there we go. Uh, they can all be linked. Now, of course, Reaper has multi-band compressor built in, re -XComp, but it doesn't do things like these the linked controls. It's a big time suck to set up linked controls across all the bands um, where this does it automatically. And you can add and remove bands and that all still work. So globally changing how much compression, um, adjusting the threshold, adjusting the makeup gain, adjusting the mix amount or individual control with just one extra click. Super cool. Uh, looks like they have A, B settings as well. Okay, so we could try that out later today if that's something that's interesting. Otherwise, yeah, let's get into questions at any point. Hope this is an easy one. How can you make the video window turn on and off depending on the project? Is this a setting? Um, I think I need more context. 
And the video window is not going to show anything unless there's a video there. But let's go to, to here. I'll open up the video window. It'll be floating. And if I make a new project tab, uh, at least on my setup, loading a new project changes my startup action. So, but if I have two project tabs open, then no. Is that what you mean? I have a setup so that when I load a new project, it loads a screen set to reset my UI. But it seems like if you have the video window open in one tab and then switch to another tab, then that will, you know, that's a global thing. So I leave a video project and move to another project. The video window is still there and I'm not using screen sets. Well, I think that's probably the solution. Start using screen sets. They're incredibly helpful. So this is my screen set one. Screen set two looks like this. Screen set three looks like this, which is, there we go. There's screen set three. Um, and most of the time I'm going between screen set one and screen set three. Oops, I pressed four instantly. Screen set three, which has a mixer on the bottom. Um, and if I click on any effects, it brings up the effects browser on the side. And if I press F1, I've got my, I've got my, uh, Media Explorer there. If I press four, I've got my single monitor video setup. So I've got a couple different tabs here. Global samplers up here, mixers over here, Media Explorer and the action list are here. And then number five is similar to number three, except there's a full screen video window on the other monitor. So screen sets are incredibly helpful very powerful and you should be using them. I, one of the first things I always set up when I set up Reaper for myself, go to the view menu and then screen sets layouts, go to the windows view and then set up your shortcuts here. So you, you configure the windows the way you want and then you, um, you hit save here. I, I would not work without them. And so along with that, I have uh, startup actions. So if I go to the action list and search for startup, this one, but uh, so load track view number one, change transport theme element background according to Ripple State. That's, yeah, th these are just kind of some, some extra things, but if I go to SWS, show project global startup actions and run that. Screen set load, screen set number one is the project startup action and custom startup action is my global startup action. So when you launch Reaper, the global startup action runs. When you load a project, the, um, the project startup action runs. And so that's saved with each project. I have that saved in my default template. So that's what that, why that happens. Will Reaper become industry standard? I think it depends on the industry. I think it doesn't really matter, really. They're such a small company that it's unlikely that they they will be able to support, like, I don't know, a billion dollar industry. Look at how Avid has dropped the ball so many times and they are like hundreds of people working there. Where Reaper, it's, you know, handful of people and uh if they the way that they can compete without any advertising without a large um crew of of coders and everything marketing teams no email list none of that stuff uh it's it's incredible that <laughs> what what they're able to do with such a small team but i think if they were the industry standard it would probably be a bad thing for everyone in a way anyway let's move on from that jason you're not using screen sets shocked and disappointed <laughs> uh i should probably make a 1080p friendly screen set when i can't use 4k yeah that sounds like a good that's a good use of that so it'll save like your reaper window and any of the floating windows there's a bunch of settings in there for setting that up. I've done multiple videos, video tutorials on screen sets, going into all the details, how to make them, but 
the short answer to solve that problem with, with stuff. Screen sets, global startup, I think that will solve the problem. Anytime for me is like, I go to, I launch a project and things aren't showing the way that they're supposed to, it's almost always it's not loading the screen set. For long form audio where I have split a single item into many pieces, how can I use an action to establish a region for each item? For each item. I believe there is an action here. I think it's this one, create regions from selected items named by active take. So let me just uh, put in an example item here. So there's, there's a bunch of items. I'll select them, create regions from selected items, and it does that. So I think that's what you were looking for. And uh, that should do the trick. The only thing is you'll probably have to rename things manually after the fact. Uh, that was just a SWS action. Uh, Pat says, I would use screen sets if I weren't using two displays personally. I think it helps even using two um, just to being be able to reset your view instantly. So often instead of having a bunch of floating windows where I got to click the X, I'll just hit one on my keyboard and it resets my view. I'll plug in windows close and you know I'm back to just seeing the arrange view like nice and big. It can also be used to float certain windows. So, um, so you can have like all the plugins in your monitoring effects chain positioned in a certain way on your second monitor, and then you know close them all instantly as well. And so, I think it's one of the most powerful personalization customization things we can do with Reaper. Is anyone having issues with the stock frequency spectrum analyzer when it's embedded in the MCP or TCP? It's super zoomed in, unusable for me. Nothing to do fixes it. I actually haven't looked at that at all. Um, we can try it. I'm guessing it's this one here. And we'll embed it in the TCP. Close that. And then add in something, some sort of sound. All I see when it's embedded is blue boxes. I would guess it's the theme. There aren't really settings for it as far as I know. But I guess it, it doesn't look like this. I don't think I can really help with that. It could be like a UI scaling thing. Um, if you're not using a, like Windows at 100% or something like that, it could be like a high DPI thing mac for pc difference yeah it, it, there's a lot of things that could be um i would post a screenshot on the forum and and see if anyone else has that issue where they know the the answer i don't use the embedded ui thing very often and i i don't really know how to troubleshoot things like that how about going through using multiband compression and sidechain to help a high frequency item reduce other high frequency elements of bass and mid sounds. Is that too much for here? No, we could do that. So that would be a pain without something like X6. Yeah, so doing that with just Reaper plugins would be pretty difficult, um, especially if you want like the high frequencies of some source to affect the high frequencies of some other source. You could have like kind of transients uh, or just peak level affecting the highs of something else. But frequency dependent ducking is a little tricky with, with Reaper stock stuff. But we could definitely explore that. It's one of those things that would commonly be used by something like um, Track Spacer, something like that. I don't think there's a Reaper stock plugin that could do it well. Like uh, I've done a tutorial on this and Kenny's done a tutorial on this and making a um, dynamic EQ from re-EQ. How to make re-EQ a dynamic EQ and why you shouldn't bother. <laughs> you can do this. It's a lot of extra work, in my opinion. And when Nova is free, um, and it'll do it without any additional steps, it's like, you know, there's no point. 
So uh, yeah, this Nova has a external sidechain input and you can set a single band to follow that. And I believe that it's it uses the same filter on the sidechain as the input or you know that band. So it only it's frequency dependent, what I'm trying to say. So um, I would just use Nova instead of trying to do it with re-EQ. Yeah, I have Nova GE as well. Um, I used Nova like with like hundreds of instances on a documentary uh, sound edit. When that was all done and paid, I I uh, I bought Nova GE because it was just so useful. And then I I used that a ton on um, field recordings to to balance things and um, podcast sound design stuff as well. And the thing where you have lots of clips and you need to balance things with dynamic EQs, I love Nova. Uh, trying to use Pro Q for that, but there's no control over attack and release time. Yeah, so um, maybe that's a good use of something like X6. So let me get some other sound. Maybe I've got a string. Let's just quickly see if this works. So, these two sounds... I don't know if those are tempo synced, but they, uh... They kind of compete in, in some frequencies. Let's actually just force this to... to be in time. So let's say for a creative use, we'll take the, uh, we'll take multiband X6, we will sidechain input from the tambourine in here. We'll take the high frequencies, we'll go to, again, this is my first time really using this plugin. Um, we'll see if I can just figure this out intuitively. Hit this gear button, we'll go sidechain source external and set it to multiband and play the track. Oh, I was doing, sorry, I was doing the, the wide band there, but I want just the threshold. So that's, that's basically how you would do it. I don't think this is a great example because they're not, I don't know, it, it's such a short percussive sound versus... Um, actually, should change the attack and release time uh, before we decide it's not good. And that's actually an interesting use. So we could actually boost the highs only when the tambourine's playing. So let's take uh, the tambourine out of the main source.
That's a pretty neat effect. Attack and release settings are important so the rest of the tracks affected don't pulse with the compression, yep, or get distorted. I think this is a neat use of that. The adds movement to a sound that's otherwise static. Yeah, take a percussive element, don't put it in the main mix, but modulate um, volume using it with a compression or expander. Hey, Tad, welcome. Jerome's here as well. Thank you. Sounds like house music now. <laughs> Yeah, I just grabbed two random sounds. Using that on subgroups or even harsh mixes can be effective. Yep. AVA Music Group. They've got a new virtual instrument. A modern trailer synth. I have a license for this, I believe. It's in my inbox, but I haven't played with it. I haven't looked at any of the videos or anything. But they've offered to do some uh, a giveaway. So I think we'll set this up so that next week, uh, next Friday stream, we do a walkthrough of the Unity Modern Trailer Synth and then uh, give away a few copies. What do you guys think of that? So a little preview of next week. Just have not been able to <laughs> go into my inbox or get through any of the things in my inbox this week other than lessons. Um, it was my birthday this week, by the way, if you didn't know. So, um, didn't do anything at all on Wednesday. Music related, work related. I didn't do anything. I didn't open my inbox. I didn't answer any emails. Um, I went out for a, a long hike with the kids. And, uh, yeah, it was really nice. And then I saw a bunch of uh, family. They all came over after. And I made pulled pork tacos for dinner. It was great. Yeah, I want to show you cool stuff that I got, but actually a ton of the stuff that I got for, like for my birthday was from my wife and it's just been like, you know, it's been a constant stream of new bases and new pedals and stuff like that. But all that stuff's like for birthday, just in advance. I did get some really cool cables from my brother. These are Ernie Ball instrument cables. Um, they're expensive, but I think they make an awesome gift for a musician. They're a little more expensive than I would pay for my, on my own. I don't know, 30, $38 Canadian, I guess, for a 10 foot cable. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> I think they look great. And I'm already using a bunch of Ernie Ball cables in my pedal board. Um, I also got another pedal board. It was a, uh, what do you call it? The Bone from, I don't remember, Gator maybe? Yeah, I've got the little one as well. I've had this for a little while. I actually got that at a thrift store, but yeah. So I got a, a extra, an extra, extra pedal board. Oh, that reminds me. Um, on Amazon, I was seeing lots of weird pedal boards and I thought there's some interesting things happening with pedal boards right now that I haven't seen in a, you know, this is all new stuff to me. What I'm used to seeing is, is something like this. This is almost identical to the one that I've got my main pedal board, which is, uh, what is it? What is it? <laughs> one sec. I've got the pedal train too. This is, this is a clone of that. So like it's expected to see like this exact kind of thing. You cover it in, in tape. Um, you strap your power supply to the bottom and you know, it's just a, a solid board. But there's new things happening in pedal board design, such as this one here, the expand pedal board. So if it's not full of pedals, you can actually shrink it down by like a third. Or if you get one more pedal, you can expand it. Or I think there's even maybe an additional, I can't tell if that's an additional thing you can buy to add on, um, but they've got this in multiple sizes. You can get a bag with it. Just an expandable, resizable pedal board is interesting. It's expensive considering it has no power, doesn't come with pedals, doesn't come with cables. 
it's just some Velcro. Um, yeah, and it's resizable. I'm guessing these are like uh, cable channels here, maybe. Interesting design. Something else I saw. Some other one. I probably won't be able to find it. Um, oh, there's these. These are like plastic, hollow, maybe. But yeah, like this is a completely new design that I've never seen before. Wedge-shaped thing instead of a big, heavy piece piece of aluminum. Thirty six dollars could fit ten pedals. There's this style. It's like made out of Meccano or something. But yeah, different levels, lots of room to hide cables, power supplies and things like that underneath. There's this one, which has like this aluminum grid. Maybe this is modular. You can, you can change the shape of it. That's pretty cool. Looks great. My first pedal board was one I made myself with a big like under the bed storage um, thing. I don't know if I'll be able to find it. It was like a hard top under the bed bin. I still have it, but I don't use it as a pedal board anymore. I don't see like the exact one, but let's say it's something like, let's say it's something like this and it's like four feet long. And then in the lid, I had pegboard in there that I just like screwed in. They're attached to the lid, there'd be the pedal board, uh, and then there would still be room for cables and extra pedals and power supplies and stuff like that. So when I was in a band, that was, that was like my main setup. I do prefer the pedal train to that. Here's another interesting one. This is made out of wood. Pretty nice looking, I'd say. Something you could probably do yourself pretty easily. You've got some extra plywood. Here's another interesting one. It's, it's more of a thin, um, a thinner metal rather than square frame. I feel like this one would have a sound. It would be resonant or something noisy. Not that it would get into the, into the sound of your guitar, but it might be just annoying to stomp and have it an echo in the room. This seems excessively cheap. It seems too cheap. But it's good rating, so I don't know. I recently got the the Donner pedal su power supply. I don't see it here, but in a lot of these I think the first one I clicked on had it in the Yeah. I got this one. It's really good. I would highly recommend this one. Uh, using this with my synth setup. So I've got some pedals. Uh, some of the pe uh, the synths can be powered from this as well. So it reduces cable clutter or uh, like AC power adapter, stuff like that. Definitely not isolated if it's that cheap. Yeah, probably not. But if you don't get any noise, then it's all good. That other pedal power supply Maybe that's a good one for my new board. Let me just look at that again. It's got AC ports on the top, which you never see. You wouldn't want to run an amp off that. Um, my, my Voodoo Labs power supply for my pedal train, um, that one has one AC port on it. You wouldn't run a, an amp off of it, but you could run a pedal, an additional, um, you know, something that has its own special adapter. This would give me six and one high current, so seven. This one may, oh, this one doesn't have any reverse things. And there's a larger one. 
yeah, for the price, I think I would, I'd try this. I'll probably order that one just as, as an extra. Cause I always need like one for my desk, one for my synth station, one for my pedal board, one for my extra pedal board. The, the fact that this one comes with a power supply, like a regular easy to use power supply that doesn't take up a lot of room in the, um, in the power strip, that's a big bonus. Don't have individual pedals. I have a GT5 and HX FX. Yeah. Um, with a power supply, you could run both off of one cable. And there's a lot of cheap pedals that are still like fun. So don't worry about having to buy expensive pedals all the time. Uh, Jerome says, I have one pedal in the loop of my Pod HD 500X, a Korg SDD 3000. I don't know what that is. Korg SDD. Programmable digital delay. Interesting. Yeah, I've never seen this one. I don't have any Korg pedals. I've got a keyboard and uh, a Volca sample. I don't think I've ever owned any Korg pedals. Yeah, Korg has made, like, the, the pitch black tuner is very common, or the DT-10. I've seen those a lot. Um, I may have used this one at one point. I remember their tone works thing back in the day. Um, they're pretty common. I think I played with this one once. I've seen these, the Pandora. I thought about buying one of these at one point, but they're sort of like, just like a practice amp kind of thing. And then these very similar to the zoom things, pretty bad sounding really. Speaking of pedal boards, there's these on reverb that always look cool in the, like the preview. And then you see it and it's just, <laughs> It's just a chunk of wood. Why does this look cool when this looks so bad? Like, I would be super pissed off if this arrived when I was looking at this. Guitar rig is one of my least favorites. The Waves one is worse for me. Yeah, Korg might be more well known for their rack mount effects. Uh, Synchrotron. You've got a bunch of synth gear. Do you integrate it with Reaper at all? But other than like audio in, do you have you done any like CV signals from Reaper to hardware? I've been looking at the uh, some of the expert sleeper stuff, and I find it way too complicated. But this can do it. This can send signals out. Uh, I think I got my. I think I got the Mavis to respond to it, but it was very tricky to get anything working out of it okay so if, if you don't know anything about it then uh I, i'm just demoing it I'm, I'm not i don't think i'm gonna buy it it was way too complicated to get running need a dc coupled audio interface i believe i do the arturia stuff is uh dc coupled let me check that oh hmm Maybe mine isn't. Maybe I need this one to make it work. Maybe that was the issue. Apparently they do get quite hot. These, yeah, these will burn your hands in the summer. Seems like this one actually is not DC coupled and I, I just assumed that it was. Well, that would probably explain the issue. <laughs> I really thought it was. That's a, maybe that's a good reason to upgrade my audio interface. I've been thinking about it for a while. I could probably do it now. That's probably a, a, a feature worth having as I get more into synths. Which audio interfaces are DC coupled? Somebody's probably written a article about that. Sweetwater did. Personas, Universal Audio, Motu, Apogee, 
RME native instruments. And then Archery is not on this list. Uh, you've got the complete audio six mark two. Or that's what you're recommending me. I feel like this would be fine, but it's a bit of a downgrade for me because it doesn't have the ADAT ports, and I do need that. I think you might need the uh, DC coupled outputs and the software. So, I don't know. I guess Motu is another option. Never really been, been a fan of their software. I'll have to think about it. Expert Sleepers ES9. Oh, that. A Eurorack audio interface. Yeah, for for your setup, that would definitely make more sense. Yeah, I've only been looking at the uh, the plugin. Apogee is expensive. They are. Um, I've used a couple of them. The original Duet, I had some issues with. I think one actually like broke. I was using one at a, a for a presentation and. It belonged to that facility and it stopped working after the thing. So I'm not sure what happened. If I had to guess, it was like a phantom power issue. Some of the duets had an issue of, of, uh, randomly like momentarily disconnecting and doing full scale audio out, which was a huge pain or they would just brick themselves. I had the element 24 for about a month. Um, it had, the software had too many bugs for me to continue using it. So I don't know if we can find it because discontinued. It was an, it was a very nice sounding interface, but I don't think this is still available. Um, but basically it's an audio interface with no physical controls, just ports on it. And... It was like $900 or something like that for the basic one. Great sound on the mic preamps. I use this for recording, mixing in Reaper volume two, um, from beginning to end, and then took it back to the store and I got the app, the audio fuse. The audio fuse I like better. Um, mic preamp, definitely loud enough. This software control panel is, is the main issue I had the Apogee Control Mac. There's certain things you need to like right click to bring up a menu. If you have two monitors, the pop-up menu wouldn't be in front of you. It would be on your other monitor in the corner. Super annoying, they never fix that. And um, the other thing was, if I had like a Facebook tab open, my volume control would just crank up to maximum. Um, so it was very strange and I, I spent two weeks on on their support trying to get that fixed or acknowledge the bug or something like that but like i couldn't set my gain and just leave it it would just other software would just randomly crank up the volume and even on inputs where there was nothing connected it would be getting noise because it would just max out the volume the upside was that it was a 32-bit audio interface and but yeah the downside is that any software can take, can hijack it and, and make it completely useless for you. But when it was working, it sounded really nice. Uh, after I gave up on it, they added um, a bunch of, um, they have like a software suite now. Their stuff is expensive and I don't think it really works. Or my experience was it was that it doesn't work that well. This one probably doesn't have the, the DC coupled outputs. This has the damn dongle issue. Symphony desktop. I would consider this one maybe. Oh yeah, they've, they've got a plugin system. It comes with a few plugins, but the other ones are basically just as expensive as the UAD stuff. Yeah, not enough analog outs for me. How do I make my Rode Video Go 2 sound like a Neumann? 
Uh, hey, Jesse. There are plugins that will do EQ matching, sort of. What was that called? There's one for um, IK Multimedia. What's it called? Mic Room. So the plugin needs to have its own, like a, a source and a target. So let's say you've got a SM57 here and you want it to sound like a U87. It can kind of do that and you can increase harmonics, proximity effect. It's fairly reliable, I would say, but yeah. But of course, it's just changing the EQ. It doesn't make it more responsive, anything like that. So it does some pretty wild EQ moves to make that work. I always find it interesting to take something like the uh, like the iRig mic and then change it to something like the, I don't know, 121. That can be kind of a crazy change. Um, other than that, you kind of need to have a recording of, of your voice on both to be able to uh, create an EQ profile to make that work. Um, I will say the in your last video, the uh, voiceover part was a little bit sort of muffled sounding compared to the live room. So, or, you know, the main camera angle. I think it was the same mic, maybe. If you guys don't know, uh, Chef Jesse is a friend of mine. We went to audio school together and he's now doing cooking videos. Just started on YouTube. Secret Agent Paul, is HRS still going? No, we've had about a year hiatus, maybe. No, not quite a year. I think it was about October. We kind of just stopped scheduling the calls and haven't talked about it at all. I don't know. It was it was a tough thing to continue doing after a while. Ryan missed a, an episode or two. Uh, we used to like just have a kind of consistent schedule for recording the videos. And um, we tried to get two done in each session so every two weeks we would do a call and we'd have multiple weeks ahead of time ready and then you know you miss one week or two weeks and then it's like okay well now we don't have any in advance and it was really hard to keep that going and we didn't make any money from it so it was like there's no real incentive to keep going if it wasn't fun um, we always have a good time when we're doing the calls but just getting that that ball rolling making the videos and then or the podcast and not really seeing any feedback from the the audience like not lots of comments likes facebook shares things like that so if people liked it we didn't know and we didn't get enough back to keep it going jason wants to plug his free plugin for the voltage modular module dispatch cool jason I've never used Voltage Modular. That's the Cherry Audio one, is it? We'll just loop this. Okay, and I'm gonna move that plugin over here. So the most sort of neutral one, I think, is the... Um, like if you don't have the exact same mic, you might want to try something like the the iRig mic voice, I think it was. Maybe this one. distortion on this one. But like, let's say you like the sound of this one. You can try different mics.
Some of them sound just super flat. But you can make some really interesting combinations. Just treat it like a special effect. I think you can find some really cool stuff. And then again, bypass, there's the original sound. Let's do a... Uh... Let's do that for the mid. And then the side will change there. You gotta pay a lot of money for that kind of effect, usually. Yeah, just as a special effect, I think this is really cool. I've never really used it um, for its intended purpose, but I don't know, I, maybe it's cool for that as well. It might actually be really subtle. Now I'm curious though. Uh, Jerome, let me let me explore this this thing for a moment, and then I'll come back to your question. I want to try the mic room with the fifty seven as the source, and we'll try I don't know some of these other settings. Then check check check. Testing one two three. This seems a little quiet. That's probably better. Yeah, that seems better. I can notice the latency now in the headphones. Um, so yeah, 57 with a ARC-121 um, uh, transposition, we'll call it. And there's the proximity effect, increasing the proximity effect, which is just this big low bass sort of thing. And harmonics, it's cranked all the way up, lots of harmonics. And let's go to the vintage style and telephone effect. So yeah, it's kind of cool. Vintage Dynamic 20. So that's the uh, the D20 from AKG. Velo 8 is a Groove Tubes, I think, something like that. Uh, Groove Tubes Ribbon. Uh, that's a Bayer Dynamic uh, 160. There's the Royer R121 ribbon mic. There is the Tube VM, what is that? Is that the Phantom or something like that? I can't remember um, who makes that one. Some like super high-end mic. There's another condenser. I don't know, this is probably a tube mic because it has vents in it. There's the uh, AKG C1, uh, C414. There's the, what is that? Neumann KM170? No. I forget the model numbers. 170 something, but I forget the actual name. Uh, seems like a tube mic. KM84, pencil condenser. I don't know. The differences are somewhat subtle, I find, with a lot of these. So I can click through here pretty quickly, and, and a lot of them sound just exactly the same. So I don't think it really drastically changes things other than, like, the vintage one. But it, you can also purposely choose the wrong mic. So you could say that you were using a lavalier microphone, and then you switched over to the bottle microphone, and it makes a big difference. But 
you know, it's not really the intended way, but I, I think it's just interesting to use it as a special effect. It's a plugin I don't use all that much, um, but it's useful on occasion when you don't want to just pull out an EQ and, um, you know, you can use your knowledge of audio engineering and microphones to create a more interesting sound. I think the differences there would probably be even more noticeable with uh, like a guitar. Can you show us how it's the configuration of the track to put pedals effects in the mix of the audio? Probably not today, but I can show you, I'll link you to a video because I've covered that topic many times. So that's gonna be at the Reaper blog. You search for reamp is probably the best. Printing effects to the same track. I'll recommend this one. Yeah, it's custom actions um, for doing that, but also I cover the routing, I think, in this video as well. You can use... Um, how to reamp in Reaper. Super old video on that one. Lots of ways to do it, really. You don't have the hardware to reamp, is it okay? If you have line outputs, it will still work. It may be, it may just respond differently than a real guitar into a pedal would. If you want it to be the perfect, you know, recreation of, of, of the signal path, like as if you were playing a guitar through it originally, then a reamp box is the best way. It's also helpful because it has a ground lift. Usually if there's any sort of buzz or hum coming through, you can flip the switch and then it eliminates that. So it's useful. My audio interface has a reamp output built in, so I don't always use this, the, the reamp box. Um, but not all audio interfaces have that. Okay, uh, Jerome, you had a question. Save live output to disk. The only way to export a session with the outboard gear on a mix down. No, no. So if you've got outboard gear on a mix, and you want to render that, you go to the render page, and all you need to do is set where it says full speed offline, set that to online render, and then it will play the mix in real time. So live output to disk is kind of the same thing, but it's just recording all the time. This online render, it, you have all these other options for how it does it, uh, but yeah. Online render, that's basically set, uh, rend set, rendering your main mix through effects. Uh, that's how I would do it. But most of the time, I'm usually recording to another track or recording to the same track with a custom action, um, all that sort of thing. Uh, setting the track to record output mode. Uh, let's say stereo and setting the track to monitor track media when recording and, and recording in place through um, reinsert or something like that. It depends where the effects are going out and coming back. There's also an option in, it's an SWS option, I'm pretty sure. Uh, if we set, search for real time, set render speed to real time or set render speed to real time, not what, toggle. Right, so, um, you know, you got this option when you re render or right click, um, render tracks to stereo stem tracks and mute originals. You can set the render speed with one of these actions. So currently I've got that set to off, but it'll record in real time using that. What DAWs do you use deep like Reaper? No others. I used to use FL Studio extensively or exclusively, um, except for audio recording. And that was a huge reason why I switched because audio recording in FL Studio band mixing multiple tracks of audio, just not a good workflow. Ever since I switched back to Reaper or, or Pro Tools before then, I haven't been able to go back to FL Studio and and use it really at all. It's been uh, pretty tough to try to do that. 
It's just too different. It's a good DAW, but it's totally different. Are these headphones comfortable to wear over top of the arms of your glasses? Um, not terrible, not amazing. I don't think any headphones are really amazing over over glasses. Um, I don't. I pretty much only wear my glasses for the streams and making a video. I don't wear them too much outside of that. So I I can't really can't really say. But they're not they're not bad. Most of the weight's on the top. These headphones are hard to get right now because of the war. But uh yeah. The Verum ones. Um somebody ordered in October and they got them in June, I think. <laughs> They're really hard to get right now. They should make headphone pads that have a little notch for the the arm uh, glasses arms. I haven't seen that as a product yet. Can you hear my kids in the background? I can. <laughs> yeah, my son's being super annoying today. I can hear him constantly during the stream. It, he's he's six feet over there. He keeps laughing, right? But I can't hear him, yeah. He's watching like Fail Army or something like that. I can look at my YouTube history and see what he's watching right now. Roblox bullshit. Skibbity toilet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, guys, I don't really know what to do other than uh, do Q&A today. I didn't really have any big plans. It's been just sort of like a tiring week. I uh, didn't sleep well because of the heat and stuff. All I want to do is like relax, play video games, eat too much. Uh, I kind of bummed out this week because my watch, this, my Skagen hybrid, which I love so much, has only lasted six months. So it's disappointing. I need to get a repaired or replaced or something. I don't want to have to get an Apple Watch. The charging contacts at the back disconnected, so it won't charge. But, I mean, it, it's. I feel like it's made such a positive impact in my life over the past six months. Like, that I, I, I just really like having the, wearing a watch now. I haven't, it was like probably 10 years since last time I wore a watch and it's just this such a nice mechanical but digital movement it's so cool movement tracking allows me to track calories quite well and so when I don't have that I'm not going to track my meals because the the ex, the consumed no not consumed the burned number is going to be way off and yeah so it's disappointing that it's it's almost almost depressing actually that broke on the 18th well i went to charge it when it was at 15 percent. it wouldn't accept the charger and try cleaning it and stuff there's no you can't remove the battery or anything like that it just won't charge so that sucks activity tracking is is super important it, it changed all of my habits in a good way, I think. So, am I still grinding Diablo 4? Uh, I wouldn't say grinding. I, I play it casually, maybe two hours a night. Um, sometimes I'm tempted to, to play it a little bit earlier than that uh, in the day, but playing that a fair amount. I got sucked into playing uh, modded Minecraft again this week. I don't know. It's just that that sort of easy puzzle solving sort of thing uh what is it the the stone block basically sky factory automation you know how to how to you need to get this goal and then you need to automate it so that you never have to do that thing again i don't know i get sucked into it and then it affects my sleep in a bad way <laughs> how is obsidian going i passed that very first day we're talking about it, what, a week ago or something like that? A little over a week ago. 
I started this this blog post. I did a solid like hour and a half or something like that on it. And then it was like lunchtime and I just have not finished this. And then it was like stream day and then another week has gone by and I just, you know, I needed a haircut. So I didn't want to make a video and then I did the haircut and then it was, then it was my birthday and then it wasn't working and now it's stream day again. And I still haven't made that video. And I don't honestly don't feel like vi making the video right now either. So <laughs> we're in the final like 20 minutes of the stream. But if you have any Reaper questions, let me know. I'll try to answer them. Yeah. So Obsidian, I think it's cool. I, I like it for the most part. Uh, I think we're talking about highlighting and I use that highlight. Um, uh, one of the, the plugins, there's so many plugins. It's very cool. Um, I think this is the realistic style, something like that. I can see why this is really popular. That's what I want to say, why this is popular, why there's a lot of people using it or, or why people are making tutorials and things on this. It's very flexible in a way it's overwhelming because there's what, hundreds of, there's a, over a thousand community plugins. I assume there might be even paid things, templates and stuff for this. You know, and if you like the like black and purple look of it, it's it's cool. I assume that you can change all that stuff. Themes. Too bright. <laughs> Hurts my eyes. Change the accent color. Yeah, it's like pretty much everything that I've like looked for has been there. I haven't hit any limitations and it's just in general, it's just a nice, simple thing to to type into. I do like Apple Notes because it's simple, but I keep running into limitations. Um, I assume that I'm not going to be happy with this if I pull out my Apple Pencil and iPad and, and try to do highlights and things like that. I assume I'm going to run into the same sort of issues. I, I assume I probably can't even draw into this. But for text only, drafting um, blog posts, I think this will be good. But I haven't put in the time to really commit to moving all my notes over or anything like that. Looks more organized than Repack. Yeah. I mean, if we're looking at the the things, like with these community plugins, every uh, every user that does this has to write this whole document, has to do screenshots and things. Reaper community kind of does that with the, uh, the forum posts. Well, sometimes, not all the time, but that would be like an improvement for Repack. You know, maybe someday it will look something like this where you can browse um, by by name for things that you haven't installed yet and see screenshots and, and usage. But for the most part, like as it is right now, you have to find a script. Let's say this one, and you have to read it from the code or go to... Uh, repack, browse, I'll cancel the updates. Oh, it doesn't, damn it. <sighs> well, anyways, yeah, you gotta, there's multiple steps to see the documentation. It's, it's not so easy. Eventually I could see that being possible, but also it probably adds a lot more, a lot more downloads, slow things down. Any ideas to why certain plugins might lag Reaper's playback? Notice UED and Neural DSP plugins don't exactly add latency, but lag to the whole session visually. I do notice that. I don't know exactly why. One thing I have noticed that makes a difference recently uh, under general advanced UI system tweaks, if you're on Mac, I've I found that this option here, throttle mess events, having it all off except for move, makes a big difference. But if you're not on a Mac, then I don't really know. Where I notice that most is um, if you have the the MIDI editor and you're, you're playing and yeah. So see here, it's, it's smooth. It's, it's moving freely. But if I change that to this other setting, turn off move 
uh, throttle events and play. It's very choppy. Like when I'm moving my mouse, it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't play smoothly. If I let go of the mouse, it's very clean. So I'm assuming that similar thing is uh, with those with those plugins it is worth a shot pat i think what i need to do is set up set up obsidian so that it replaces notes and uh code editing um i'm using sublime text for code editing but i'm pretty sure obsidian would be able to do the same thing two game plugins it's great stuff it is cool that you are using that mostly these days. Awesome. Uh, I got to talk to him about doing CV plugins. Um, I feel like we should have some basic, like, um, modulation shapes for CV. You can embed code snippets. Right. That would be useful for a blog post, but I want to, like, be able to write code in there and have the syntax. I think we're going to end the stream here today a little bit early, but um, I've got a call uh, at uh, in an hour and hour and a half or so. So and I need to make lunch. I need to eat. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm just exhausted today. We're going to wrap it up here. Check out the website for the, the courses, recent videos. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next week. We'll, we'll try to do something fun next week. Oh, maybe we'll have a, a plug-in giveaway next week. All right, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I will see you guys next week.